Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. We're part of News Now and the Belmont Journal. And Franklin Tucker is editor of Belmont's online newspaper, The Belmontonian. So, Franklin, let's talk about news happening this week. Um, first up, let's talk about traffic enforcement. Well, uh, uh, let's talk about what's happening in 23 other states, and that is that they have uh, automated traffic enforcement. And uh, at the latest um, uh, meeting of the uh, traffic, uh, the uh, the TAC, the traffic advise, advisory the traffic committee, advisory committee, committee um, they uh, at the, their final agenda item, and they only spent ten minutes on it, was um, a uh, the beginning of what could be a long and drawn out, and, and that is what they. Uh, Coleman, who is the chair, said it could be a very contentious thing of, of placing, of making Belmont one of 10 experimental places around the Commonwealth to have um, this automated traffic enforcement to see how it works and, uh, and any way of, of improving it or maybe not even doing it at all. So, Franklin, let me ask you, why, why is automated traffic enforcement or traffic cameras, why is that controversial and, and why... Why don't we already have that in Massachusetts? Well, it's it's uh, it, like anything. Um, there are people who, uh, and I guess a lot of them are attorneys, <laughs> will say that uh, there it's 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 controversial in, in some way, in some ways because uh, it, unlike uh, now when a when traffic enforcement is is done, a person is identified as the driver of a car. You can't do that, as, you know, with automated uh, traffic. Now, that this is not to say that this is going to be uh, traffic, uh, 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 you know, right now uh, we have traffic enforcement. This would make it specifically camera enforceable violations. And, such and as, those cameras, Franklin, are reading license plates. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and uh, so you don't know who actually is driving the car. So it's the car that gets caught. So, you know, what you have is failure to stop at a red light, illegal right turn, speeding, passing a school bus, blocking an intersection, or driving in a bus lane. And, and you know, they, they, uh, these enforcements need uh, new laws in Massachusetts. And the person who's, who's leading, who's heading this, is our own senator, Will Brownsberger. And he has made it, um, uh, he, and he wants to get this starting to move to see if we can actually do this. Because it does increase safety and when, when you go into a town that has this. You know, uh, people... You know, if it's, you know, late at night or early in the morning and, you know, you, and you want to run the red light because there's no police officers, you're going to get caught. So it's also a way of during, um, you know, uh, um, uh, morning traffic uh, and, and afternoon traffic when people go on the bus lane. You know, you want to keep them off the bus lane to keep that, you know, dedicated to uh, uh, public transportation. So it's so it's interesting. But as the TAC also said, it's not going to happen tomorrow. This is the beginning of a process which will take quite a long time. First, uh, the, TAC, the, TAC, the TAC members will have to study up on it, get as much research as possible. I believe that in Cambridge, they're, they're thinking of doing this right now. Somerville is also um, has been interested in it. But uh, as we, what we were told uh, last night, um, they would like to have 10 towns in the Commonwealth, 10 towns and cities, to be, be almost like the... Um, the, the, for, the forerunners of, of this new uh, technology in Massachusetts. So Franklin, and, and like I said before, 23 states already have it, and there seems to be um, consensus that it actually does uh, improve safety. So given the, um, um, the, the sheer number of red light runners, which um, I think everyone is aware of, it's not a bad idea. But let me ask you, um, what is the timeline associated with this? Do, or, or do we have any sense of how long it will be before we'll actually see uh, traffic enforcement cameras in place in Belmont. This is going to have to go through the legislature. This is going to have to have a lot of public meetings. It will have to have public meetings also in those towns where uh, they want to do this. Um, and so, as David Coleman, uh, as Mr. As Mr. Coleman, the uh, the chair of the TAC, said. Okay, Franklin. Trick question: What's coming up Thursday night, October twelfth at seven p.m. It's uh, it's the uh, budget summit number one. It's the official uh, release of the uh, very first uh, budget estimates from the town. 
uh, and it's going to be uh, um, um, hosted by uh, Jennifer Hewitt, who is our finance director, the town's finance director. And it's going to be the first numbers, the first idea of how the town is going forward with the budget uh, for the uh, FY25 budget. Um, uh, you know, pretty much uh, the numbers are pretty much, um, uh, you know, we, we, uh, the town knows what the budget is going to look like, uh, basically. It's going to be um, almost 90% um, there. We don't, uh, the one major uh, uh, estimate that we still need is uh, free cash, which has uh, been delayed this year because of lateness of uh, submitting it to the state, which has to certify free cash. Now, Franklin, there, there um, you know, e each of um, the, the town departments, I believe, um, is charged with uh, preparing two budgets this year, one that assumes an override and, and one that does not. Do, do we know um, um, at this point uh, the extent to which we'll be getting into any of those kinds of numbers at this budget summit? Not really, because we really need to know what the number for free cash is and how the town is going to use it. You know, there's going to be a, a, a certain amount that that the state will certify, and then it will be a decision within the town and um, uh, uh, and by the select board to decide where the where where free cash is going to go. Are you know will the town put a uh, a significant number into reserves. So if the budget doesn't pass, so if an override doesn't pass, there's some kind of cushion, even though very thin cushion, that the town can use. Or will most of the uh, will we use a, a, a more proportion of that free cash for um, uh, this year's budget? You know, will to to soften any kind of blow that we're going to look at. You know, because we we will have a deficit. All right. Well, we'll have to stay tuned to to. To, to see what happens at the October 12th meeting. And most likely, no big surprises, but um, an important meeting nonetheless. Uh, next up, Franklin, let's talk about some, some news of, um, involving uh, uh, the folks who are working in our schools. That's right. It was a great, it was a, a wonderful uh, ceremony that, that was held uh, uh, this, uh, this Tuesday at the select board, uh, at the uh, school committee. And that was 14 teachers received their uh, professional teaching status. So, and what a professional teaching status is, is basically, um, it, it's, they don't like to call it tenure, but it really is, it, it's a sort of tenure for uh, 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 teachers or administrators, nurses, anybody who's go through, um, anybody who's completed three years in the school system, and they uh, really um, mastered a lot of uh, um, uh I mean, they do have to, to meet four professional practice uh, practice standards um, under the uh, Massachusetts Educator Evaluation System, and it's you know very specific, and they do have to meet it and or succeed exceed it, uh, and then they will receive um, job security. All right. Well, so um, um, fourteen more teachers with professional status, and we do like our teachers having professional status. <laughs> Right. Well, and, and an interesting one was that one of the teachers, the first teacher, uh, Timothy uh, uh, Barings, um, uh, he was a, a student uh, the first year that uh, that uh, um, Michael, Mike uh, McAllister, uh, who is now the uh, director of human resources at the uh, school committee at, um, at the school district, um, his first year as a teacher. So he's so he's seen a whole entire generation uh, come through and it was a very very joyful and, and interesting um, uh, day to hear for, uh, how these people, how these people gained their, you know, why they came to, uh, to um, um, uh, who came to teaching. You know, there, there was a person who was in uh, the biotech world and, and in an important role in quality control, and she decided, no, I want to become a teacher. So That's it was great. extra. It was extra spe uh, uh, special for. A, for many of them. All right, and we do appreciate the the people who are working with our kids in our schools. Uh, Franklin, let's let's talk next about um, sports. Can you give us an update? Well, I, we had a very interesting um, uh, result uh, last uh, Friday night, um, and that was the Belmont went to undefeated uh, Winchester, the football team, and they defeated them. And there was a they won it in the last two minutes uh, on on. on, on on wonderful um, uh, drives, you know, the last two big drives that Belmont had took 
took large chunks of time off the clock. They made fourth down uh, carries. So it was a very impressive win against a good Winchester team. And now uh, Belmont is 2-2, two and two, and they're creeping closer to the playoffs, which would be a real compliment that Belmont hasn't been in the playoffs for a while. Um, uh, we have field hockey, which is now um, is uh, one of our uh, leading teams. It's uh, eight wins, two losses. Uh, and on Tuesday, they will have a, um, a, uh, a game against uh, Brookline in which uh, uh, proceeds and donations will be going to uh, breast cancer treatment. That's great. And so it's a great uh, thing. Uh, volleyball had a little bit of a uh, downturn uh, because of a, an injury to their best player. And they lost two games, but, it, but very close uh, uh, games. But now they're on the winning track with their uh, their leading player uh, back back on the court. Oh, that's good. Soccer, uh, both soccer teams, boys and girls soccer, um, a lot of ties in the last couple of days. So uh, let's see if they can turn that around, uh, especially on the weekend where the boys will, play, will be playing at Newton North. All right. Thank you, Franklin. You can find more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. That's all for now, and we'll see you next time.